Evolutionary psychology is the application of evolutionary theory to the study of human behavior. In the sentence above, how is behavior being defined? Very little. E. B. Studies behavior. If behavior is defined as the movement of individuals, most of what I read in the E. B. Literature is about the presumed ultimate causes of behavior and the data used to support these presumed ultimate causes and the adaptation is the paradigm of self-report data. In its current form it incorporates the adaptationist paradigm, inclusive fitness, kin selection, reciprocal altruism, and modern genetics. Okay. However, E. B. Appears to me to be primarily the use of the adaptionist paradigm and mostly uses self-report data as evidence for the existence of these ultimate causes of behavior. Human ethology is study of the biology of behavior. Although these two disciplines share a commitment to understanding human behavior from a naturalistic perspective, they differ in some two important ways. The problem is that both disciplines define behavior in different ways. So uh, even if behavior were the primary topic of interest for both disciplines, they're actually both studying two different things. Evolutionary psychologists study the functions of psychological mechanisms resulting in behaviors. Evolutionary psychologists use mostly self-report to support the existence of the ultimate functions of behavior. While human ethologists study behaviors as the movements of individuals. That is only the starting point for any ethological investigation. If you read any of Tanbergen's books, you will see that most of his work was on trying to understand the proximate, physiological causes of behavior. However, the movements of individuals was what he was trying to discover the proximate, physiological causes of. Human ethologists define behaviors in two distinct ways, either as structurally defined behaviors, or as functionally defined behaviors. I wouldn't go so far as saying that human ethologists define behavior in two different ways. To the best of my knowledge the concepts of structurally defined and functionally defined behavior was just introduced in my 2006 paper on the ethology of psychiatric populations to Darwinian neuropsychiatry. I have not seen anyone else use this terminology to date. However, I discussed the concept with Ibel in 2006 and gave him a reprint of this article. He said that he would incorporate it into the revised edition of Human Ethology throughout some time in 2008. We love to see. There is no mention of the concepts of structurally and functionally defined behaviors in the 1989 edition of Human Ethology. Evolutionary psychologists distinguish behaviors more broadly as function attributed behaviors related to domains of adaptiveness which have resulted from the environments proto humans recurrently faced in environments of evolutionary adaptedness. E. E. As. Examples of function attributed domains include strategic mate choice behaviors, hunting and food gathering activities, and defense behaviors. Yes. I'd agree with this. For most e, b, ologists, the ultimate function of the behavior is bundled into the behavior itself, as they use a different concept of behavior than do ethologists. Appreciate that for the first half of the 20th century, ethology was only concerned with coordinated motor patterns. I was the first one to apply ethology to behaviors, which he called cultural adaptations, in the 1989 Human Ethology book. That was just the beginning attempt to include what I have called functionally defined behaviors into human ethology. I is now almost 80 years old, so I presume that the 2008 version of human ethology will be the last version. I am very much looking forward to seeing what has changed from the 1989 version, which concentrates on what I call structurally defined human behaviors, which are what he calls coordinated motor patterns. Yet. There were enough of them in humans that he has more than 700 pages worth of photographs and descriptions of them.